Cars on track now for race one, round eight of the Ford Racing Australian Formula Ford Championship at Sandown Park. Plenty of Formula Fords for this one. Let's have a look how they start on the grid. Will Power has got the jump on the new champion, Will Davison. And they'll start off the front row of the grid. Nick Agland and Jamie Wincup out of row two. Stuart Costera and Ty Hanger start out of row three. Daniel Elliott and Darren Drake out of row four. The fifth row of the grid is made up of Marcus Marshall and Justin Cotter. Phillips and Christopher Dell from row six. Daniel Reinhardt and Andrew Jones in the brand new 2002 model Van Diemen. We'll start from position 14. Then the Ford Kart Stars champ, Mark Winterbottom and Kenny Habool. Good roll up of Formula Fords for this final round. Ash Lowe and James Small, son of Les, Sam Oliver and C. Steve Grotchell, Adrian McCurdy and Matt Fitzgerald, Adam Hickey and Richard Chamberlain out of 24. The back of the grid, Jeff Culvert and Jordan Ormsby. So a good field of Formula Fords here. One of the cars has peeled off into pit lane, I believe, here. Car 7. And that's Will Power. It is. Our pole position man. So problems here. What a disappointment. He wanted to come out and have a great run in this final round before the end of this championship. Joining us in commentary for this race is 1997 Formula Ford champion Garth Tander. Garth, that's not the way Will would want to finish the season. No, definitely not with um, Will Davison wrapping up the championship uh, with one round to go. I bet yeah, Will Power wanted to really try and uh, get some uh, some glory back off Will and try and claim these two races, but uh, that's not the way to do it, being in pit lane. Incredible battle this year. All the races were won by either Will Davison or Will Power. Total domination by those two. Now Will Davison has it all to himself as they get the start. Watch Davison just sprint away from the front row position. Looks like a nice clean start so far as they run down this long, long main straight. Jamie Wincup, though. Nick Aglin fighting over second. It's a three-way battle as they head down into turn one and Holden Corner. Looks like Ty Hanger's made a good start as well. A little bit loose under brakes for Jamie Wincup. He's lost a couple of positions there. But a good start by Aglin. And our race leader, Will Davison. He was separated by just two hundredths of a second for the man who had pole, Will Power. And he's in pit lane with problems right now. Deceptively fast around Sandown Park, Garth. I mean, they're a very small car with not a particularly powerful engine, but they punch through the air pretty effectively. They uh, they really do, and uh, over the years, the cars have become more and more streamlined, and uh, to, to now they are like today. They're almost F1 technology with aerodynamics, and uh, they don't want to punch a big hole because around this place like Sandown, uh, the draft is a very, very big advantage, and uh, if, you, if you're punching a small hole in the air, then it doesn't give the guy behind you much of an advantage. Great start by Ty Hanger. He's up there in third place. Jamie Wincup working hard there, trying to climb up a position. The field work their way under Dunlop Bridge down toward the pit straight for the first of 12 laps in this final championship round. But the championship well and truly sewn up by Will Davison. Queensland 500 seems like <laughs> an eternity since round seven. Long wait for the Formula Ford field for the final round going right through to December. He's examining a, a number of options possibly for overseas next season. And when he arrived at this championship, beginning of the year with the brand new model 2001 van diemen what a what a revelation he was the car is fantastic a little sideways as he comes through there good move by jamie wincup just got inside stuart costera the western australian driver so field now settling down it's davison aglin hanger steer has just been misplaced by wincup elliott cotter marshall drake and christopher dell rounds out the top 10 the back straight once again will davison and when he came out out of the box so fast garth at uh, the melbourne grand prix support races everyone was looking at will davison and just saying boy this guy is going to run hot but look who's running even hotter nick aglin ducks out of the draft uses that beautifully up the back straight and sneaks in front of will davison he's got a battle on his hands here yeah that's right and uh the uh, 2001 Van Diemen is a bit of a bigger car than the Spectrum, and I think that's why Will will probably struggle up the back straight. With a, there's a headwind up the back straight for the first time this weekend, so uh, the drafting games will be on for young and old, and I don't think you want to be leading on lap 11 of a 12-lap race, that's for sure. <laughs> when you get a new chassis like that, like the, the 2001 Van Diemen you talked about when it came out at the beginning of the year, the cars in Europe and England are designed to accommodate a different engine. And I know that Andrew Jones, when the 2002 model arrived a week or so ago, they've had a few problems trying to adapt 
things to fit the Kent engine that they run here in Australia. Yeah, that's right. It, it generally takes a good uh, three or four months to sort a car out uh, when it comes out from the UK. And uh, when Will turned up with his new car at the start of the year and absolutely blew everyone away, uh, I think it really sent some shockwaves through the Formula Ford fraternity. And uh, we were even watching the support races there and couldn't believe what he was doing. He was some two seconds away quicker. So uh, really, he's done a great job. And, uh, and that's why he was able to, to wrap up the championship uh, with one round to go. And uh, got to say, it was pretty good for Valvoline Cummins and Ripco. He's been, he's been our shining light this year. <laughs> Marcus Marshall, a bit further back in the pack. And yeah, it's a great drive by Nick Aglin. He's currently sixth in the Shell Championship Series. And look at this challenge now by Will Davison. Just a copybook move. Exactly what Aglin did to him on the previous lap. You get right up behind the gearbox of the car in front. That's punching a bit of hole in the air. And you use that to your advantage to slipstream the car in front. Yeah, I think you'll see these two will probably skip Ooh. away. Oh, I don't know if uh, Nick kicks that up. But if those two oh, can stay the together... They, uh, they might skip away from the rest of the field because two cars uh, running together like that generally go quicker than one by itself. The red car in the background there in fourth position that had the moment was Jamie Wincup. So the young kart star who made the step up to Formula Ford, racing the Miguel. Bit of a moment there. So the order at the moment, Davison, Agland, Hanger, doing a great job in the old Spectrum car. Stuart Costera, Jamie Wincup, Cotter, Elliott, Marshall, Drake and Dell. Great battle here between Connor, I think it's Daniel Elliott, under brakes into turn one. Uh, they say they start him young in Formula Ford, that Daniel Elliott is 16 Whoop. years old. Oh, I put Ooh. the mopper on him. <laughs> <laughs> he did, could have timed it better. There he comes back onto the circuit. But he's a very young guy. Well, he started in the championship this year. He, yes, in fact, he's still carrying still his provisional plate. Yeah. yeah, he's done an awesome job. And uh, I think this is his second or third national race and to be running in the top 10, uh, it's a good effort. Well, he absolutely ambushed the field when they turned up at uh, Barbagello Raceway earlier in the year. He was on fire there. He's so got then... a candy knack of doing that when the, <laughs> town, when the circus comes to town over there, the WA guys. I remember a young bloke called Garth Tander doing that a few <laughs> years ago when the Formula 4 Championship arrived over there, and you really put yourself on the, on the map. A lot of strong Western Australian Formula 4 drivers, Garth. Is that because the category's very well supported over there, or what do you uh, pinpoint? Oh, I think that it comes down to one sole person that actually works over there, a guy called Brett Lupton, who builds the, the stealth Formula Fords that are out there running at the moment. He's very, very passionate about making, about making the field big and competitive, and uh, he grabs guys out of carts and, uh, and gives them a helping hand and really gets, and it's a really strong state series over there, and uh, that's why, like you say, every time the National Circus comes to town, the WA guys don't, definitely don't disgrace themselves. Here's Anglin having a look here on Will Davison, but he wasn't quite close enough. He pulled out of the, the slipstream. It wasn't close, close enough to get past him. A, a good point you made earlier that I want to touch on is the fact that a lot of these guys have had a background in karts and this is their first sort of step up to a to a major car racing championship will be an open wheeler. What sort of things does Formula Ford teach you when you've you've stepped out of the basics of, of kart racing? It uh, teaches you basically the basics of, uh, of springs, shock absorbers and roll bars and things like that because obviously in a go-kart you don't have those sorts of toys to play with. So teaches you the basics of that and uh, really sets you on your way with racecraft and drafting and things like that. PlayStation fastest lap goes to Nick Agland, a 119.42 on lap four. It's still a long way away from the race record, a 118.36 set by Philip Skyfleet right back in 1997. I think we were talking about this before the race, Garth. That was back in the days when I think the track had just been resurfaced, so there's a lot more speed out there than there is today. Problems here for car 24. Gets it way out of shape through Holden Turn, but manages to get it back onto the track. Steve Rochel. Steve managing to get away relatively unscathed. 12 lap, the distance, five completed. And we're into lap six, and this battle continues for the lead between Will Davison, the new Formula 4 champion, and Nick Aglin. There's a classic example of using that slipstream for his advantage, closing right up on the back of our race leader. We're just going for a break. Check it out on the race score. Davison and Aglin very, very close together. Ty Hanger, Stuart Costera, Jamie Wincup, Cotter, Marshall, and Darren Drake. Elliot, Dell, and Winterbottom, the Card Stars champion, is in 11th more at Sandown right after this. Well, laps winding down in race one of round eight of the Formula Four Championship and a sensation during the break. Will Davison getting it all wrong in that battle with Aglin. Lost it down at Dandenong Road. Look at that crunch. He's taken the right rear or left rear corner off the car. Another incident at the other end of the circuit. That might be Mark Winterbottom, is it? I can't quite see what number that is. 
No, I don't think it is, but uh, that's a surprise about Will Davison. That is the first time all season he has blocked his copybook. I can't recall him doing anything like that during 2001. Well, exactly. He's just drove faultlessly all year. And right at the end of the season, the two Wills, Will Davison and Will Power, both being taken out of contention. So for the first time this year, we're going to have a race winner other than Will Davison or Will Power. What an extraordinary season. Keep in mind, too, Stewie Costera is only nine points behind Jamie Wincup in the battle for third place in the championship. Right now, Costera second outright, and Wincup fourth on the circuit. There's Wincup there in the red car. It's a French chassis, a Miguel. In fact, the same car used by Luke Newland to win the championship last year. This new red livery, the same, same car, and uh, the Wincups have done a terrific job with that, I'm sure. Jamie will be back in action in the Formula 4 Championship. But he's coming under increasing pressure from Daniel Elliott. This youngster from WA still on his provisional licence. And really mixing it with the best Formula 4 races in the country. Jamie did a very good job at the recent Young Guns race on the Gold Coast. One of the first times he'd stepped up to driving a, a tip-top racer. That has been a, one of the standouts in the Formula 4 competition this year. Right now fourth. The order at the moment is Agland. He's got a 5.1 second gap over Stuart Costier. He's running away with this one. It's Cotter, win cover, three laps remaining. Daniel Elliott, Marcus Marshall, Drake, Winterbottom. He's up into the top ten. That's good for the Ford Car Star. Andrew Jones is into the top ten as well after a troublesome qualifying. And Chris Dell in tenth. And look at the gap. Mate, that's light years in Formula Four. <laughs> <laughs> when you get a gap like that, you don't, you don't even believe what's going on in your mirrors. Look at this battle here. Justin Cotter. Stuart Costier has got it all wrong and he's ended up I think that was Elliot he collided with he's got damage to the front left yeah. there as well yeah, it's done a steering arm or something like that oh. and I'm sure there'll be damage to Daniel's car as well it's got about 100 degrees of toe in there so Stuart has decided to park it what a shame he was going so well in that race we hear there is a few spots of rain so maybe the track conditions getting a little bit slippy for these guys it certainly caught Stuart out in that critical moment through turn one i'd say that's probably also what happened to will when he spun it up on the uh, painted ripple strip or something like that yeah. and um it's just caught him out and it's uh and rain around here is something you definitely do not want that's helped darren drake too he's moved up the order he started from position eight was sixth just a couple of laps ago well, let's have a look at this incident again gar what happens here yep yep i'd say it will look like he was just Ooh. um out a bit wider from when uh, Justin Cotter was up the inside and maybe just out in the marbles a little bit and uh, it's caught him out of, with that within the rain it's just caught him out and Daniel had nowhere to go Bang. Jamie was very obviously Jamie Winkup's done a great job to get out of all that and, uh, and not put a scratch on the car he's got a bit of grass in the rally out of ducks but uh, come away with that pretty well indeed Aglin's continuing to grind them into pulp here 6.5 seconds he's walking away with this one Justin Cotter finds himself up in second Marcus Marshall this has been a remarkable fight back in this race qualified ninth so he's found his way up into the top three two laps remaining for our race leader drake's done very well too yeah i'm just going to say something about darren drake he's uh from wa one of the fast lane cars and that's a 1990 model car <laughs> he's out there running against a 2001 car in front of him and a 2000 model car behind him so that's a great job that's the signal for any v8 supercar teams or someone looking for potential youngsters go and have a look over in wa they seem to come out of the woodwork in the state and a great drive here could darren drake be a champion of the future he's under pressure though from jamie wincup side by side as they come across the top of the s's boy oh boy big stuff from jamie wincup and he pulls it off beautifully often when we're talking in racing garth about situations like that when people are caught up and they're dicing it's almost a hindrance to each other but sometimes in formula ford you can actually help each other sort of leap up the order that slipstreaming can prove a, a bit of a helping hand yeah that's right i touched on it a bit earlier yeah two cars when they run together on a fast circle like this and drafting to an advantage will actually go faster than one car punching the air by itself and uh, and if these guys were smart they'd uh, they'd get together and tow each other up to try and catch nick Eglund and uh, maybe have a go for the lead but i think they're more concerned about uh, racing for second place at the moment one lap remaining, 3.1 kilometres of sand out raceway with this challenge under brakes between Cotter and Marshall. Boy, oh boy, it's going to get out of the wire and there's problems there. Just after we've put wraps on Drake, he's lost it at turn one. Not sure whether he was hit or whether he came around on his own, but this dropped him right down the order. He was looking good there for a top five finish. Jamie Winkup has locked onto the back of these guys. Somehow he's thrown out a magnet maybe and pulled in Marcus Marshall. So Cotter, Marshall and Winkup, this is the battle for second position. Marshall 
pulls out to the left. Will he have enough? It'll be three wide across the top here, I reckon, guys. Winkup trying to squeeze down the middle as well. So who's going to give here? Winkup's got a great run. He's going to move up into second position unless Marshall can get him under brakes here. But no, Winkup will take it. Wow, that's great stuff from Winkup. The 18-year-old is doing a terrific job. Really has come on strong in season 2001. This strong position and the demise of Stuart Costera will, will move Wink up to third in the championship. And he's also claimed Rookie of the Year on us, so it's been a great year for young Jamie. Take nothing away from Nick Aglin, though, has done an exceptional job here. 6.7 seconds the gap, and he is absolutely straight at the class as he takes victory. A very easy victory to Nick Aglin. Could have been a lot harder if Will Davison hadn't dropped out of the battle. But it's the way they tumble, and Aglin was there to pick up the pieces. Jamie Wink up in second, an excellent second. Marcus Marshall, great fight back from ninth in qualifying to finish in the top three, and Justin Cotter did well to get up there. Mark Winterbottom, great job by the Ford Kart Star driver. He's in the top five in the Formula Ford race at Sandown Park, so it was a great effort. Should, should also thank Garth Tander for his time here in the commentary box. You can see him, of course, in race two coming up a little later this afternoon. So, Garth, good luck in that one. Thanks, Rusty. Looking forward to it. Keep in mind, there's also a second Formula Ford race to be held at Sandown Park. We won't be able to show that to you today, but you'll catch all the action on trackside 4.30 Eastern next Sunday afternoon, so make sure you catch that. All the Formula Ford action, and it's been brilliant. So we have to bring this one to a close, but a great victory by Nick Aglin. Jamie Wincup did an excellent job to get into second place. Marcus Marshall, Justin Cotter, Mark Winterbottom, excellent job to come in fifth. Andrew Jones fought his way back to sixth. Christopher Dell and Daniel Elliott in eighth. Daniel Reinhardt, Darren Drake held on at the end after that spin for 10th position. Stay with us, the V8s are back in just a few moments. <laughs> some action from Sandown, the Formula Ford race from earlier today, and the wet weather created havoc. You're looking at the Aussie Mail Formula Ford in the middle of the screen. Andrew Jones across collides there. This turns into a 10-car accident, and the sad news for Andrew Jones is that is a brand-new car. That is a 2002 model Van Diemen. Yes, they keep on coming. Major collision, and uh, no doubt this race will stop Will Power, the final one, to come in contact there. And uh, fortunately, the majority of those guys are OK. So plenty of action here at Sandown. Now, 